it is framing time. Full disclosure, I've been out of town. My dad's been hauling ass on this. Uh, he has, let's see, the entire master bedroom area. Let me just show you. Area inside the house framed off and she did some of it. Again, master bedroom. This is that walkway area. It's got all this framed off, sheeted. And then we just walked through the garage. We have this wall on the side, but today we're gonna frame that garage wall. All right, framing's coming along pretty nicely. You can see the front of the garage right here, uh, and then that back wall of it. We go towards the front entryway or sidewalk. You can see this front wall. This wall right here is the inside garage wall. And this is the underside of what will be a staircase leading to the second story. Obviously the garage door, this two door or two car garage. And this one right here, a single car, just boarded up to keep it all together. So when you're sheeting, standard convention says to space out the nails six inches apart at the edge. See, and then in the field from the middle, uh, 12 inches apart again along the window, uh, at six inches apart at the maximum. You can see these windows are cut out. So first we framed it, obviously. Then we put the sheets on of OSB. We cut the windows out from the inside with the sawzall, easy. So we still have some work to do where this add-on ties in with the old house, but that's getting worked on. But if you enter through the front entryway, which is where we're at right now, here's the living room, kitchen. Right now this is the existing kitchen, which has been closed off to the elements. Back here, going through this entryway. Again, master bathroom. If we go to the left, this is where that staircase goes to get to the second story, which will be over this garage area. And here's the entryway for the garage. We'll have a few steps getting down to it. Another little thing, this may be obvious if you're in construction, but you use galvanized nails uh, when you're doing stuff on the exterior. All of these, all galvanized. Uh, you do that for corrosion protection. If you have uh, an uncoated nail or just a steel nail without any uh, galvy, when it gets wet from the rain or whatever the case, it will leave a rust streak on your siding and it looks pretty bad. But inside the house, you're not worried about rain so you can just use these plain steel nails. And this isn't required but you can see the little ridges on these called ring shanks. They stick really good. Uh, again, not necessary but certainly easier. On the back of the sheet, you can see these that are sticking out. We call these shiners. So these need to be pounded back through the wall and then a good nail put in their place. Just enough to be able to pull it through from the other side. So as you can see behind us, we have the floor joists for the second story up on top of the first story framing. And these things are pretty beefy. It's a truss design, which is really good in bending. So a little bit of engineering background, right? I do have my uh, mechanical degree, so I know like that much about this civil stuff. But basically, for it to be strong and bending, you wanna get that weight far away from the center. The mass is not very far from the center. So if I push down on it, it bends really easily. Flip it up on its side. And if I tried to bend that, it's not really gonna bend because all that mass is pretty far away from the center. Same idea with this floor joist with the trusses. You got that two by four on the very top and the very bottom, far away from each other with the trusses making up any of the compression in the center, which is really strong. And if that quick explanation didn't tell you enough that I'm an engineer, I got a brand new, <laughs> I still got the tag on it. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> 
if we climb check this out you can see all of these are nailed in place good job dad there's a better view of the floor joists that my dad already did here's some more that we're going to do so this group of them these guys as well as this one right here are going in that area where my dad is right now he's supporting that two by six going across with a couple pieces of lumber so that we can run these trusses on top and there's what it looks like with a few of these guys done the long boys like i said it goes over that pop out window section so we're going to keep working on these there's a lot more floor joists to do so right now we're going to go through the steps of building out an interior wall we're going to start with this guy all the way down this wall will have an opening into the bathroom as well as an opening into the water closet the first step is your bottom plate which we are using pressure treated lumber for this which is code we had lines for layout, but it's pretty hard to see. So we're gonna re-snap that real quick from there. With our line in place, then we set the bottom plate, that pressure treated lumber, on the ground. We need two pieces to make it this full span, but there's a little bit of overlap. So we're just marking that off. My dad's about to trim this piece. And then this will stack right next to that. Bingo. Next up is our regular lumber for top plate it's going to get the same markings trimming it to the same length identical layout so when we mark layout on the bottom plate we'll just transfer it right over to the top plate start layout we're going to burn three quarters of an inch meaning we're going to hold the tape measure three quarters of an inch off the end of the board so that 16 inch our layout is the center of our stud not the edge so that when the drywall our lays this drywall this drywall will hit the center of each stud on layout Like my dad said, these are 16 inches on center. So notice 48, 64, 80, which on this tape measure, it's all those red boxes, 16 inches. Pretty standard, but yeah, pro tip right there from the professional himself. Just mark the red boxes. As you see, we have a straight line marked through as well as the X's. So we know which side to put our lumber on. Lumber's gonna go right there one edge of it on the line and the body of it covering that X. We have that on all of them. Which makes it easy so you don't have to think later. Just put your lumber on and go. Then coming there into this room, looking into where the tub will be, my dad has marked the center line and then from there marked out where this opening will be. So here you have the king, here you have trimmer. Same as this side, you got a trimmer here and a king here. King meaning it's gonna go straight up all the way to the top. And then this chalk line shows one more wall going this way. So we're preparing that on this board. Here's the channel for that wall. Again, king. And then this channel, I'll show you what that looks like. So we did one earlier, where we have a two by six in the back and two by fours on either side, since there are contents inside this lumber and there will be over there too. And now that we have everything marked out, the door openings and everything, we start setting our studs down into place. Like I said, one edge along the line, so it'll right over that X. We're gonna do that all the way down and then start nailing them in. And when you go to put your studs down, you're gonna look for a crown. What I mean by that is a curve along the stud. It's kind of hard to see, but if I flip it up, you can see more of a frown, more of a rainbow. There's a smile. There's a rainbow or a frown. And that's the crown. So we want that crown like that on top. Ouch! <laughs> Scared me. <laughs> <laughs> now these walls are ready to go up. Here they are. All right, there are those first two walls that you saw us build. We had to get this one up and into place, which we've done all the way to the end, sorry for the darkness. Then this wall and this wall are gonna get propped up 
and butt it up to the end of this. You can see we had to notch out that bottom plate around our pipe. We had a couple more of that situation over there. We'll give you a better look during daytime. But uh, yeah, we're, we're doing this after work. So a lot of this is gonna be done at night. So as far as keeping this wall into place, we just nailed the stud to the end wall over here. But now we need to fasten that bottom plate to the concrete. So my dad has a ram set. It's like a little 22 blank basically. And you just fire it into the floor. Again, sorry for the darkness. Let me show you a finished one over here. Same thing. Just fires that into the concrete to keep that stud from going anywhere. Okay, it's a bit brighter outside. Here's one of those interior walls we put up yesterday. We got this one. We got this beautiful view where the bathtub will be. Like this was already up, but it just looks cool. Nice tractor. And we got this interior wall here. And lastly, this wall on the back of the back bathroom. So unfortunately, I didn't get a whole lot of framing footage in this, but hopefully you at least get the idea of what we're doing. Next up, we're moving on to the second story. See you guys.